All right, so what we're going to do in this chapter is we're going to look at uh, graphs. And um, when I say graphs, I'm not talking about the specific graphs that you've probably seen before, like the XY coordinate plane. What I'm talking about is mathematical graphs, okay? So this is uh, things that are in what's called, in mathematics, graph theory. Graph theory. All right? And so in graph theory, when we talk about a graph, we're really talking about um, a... An object with, with two sets. One set is a set of points, or what's called vertices. Okay. Now, these points or vertices are uh, typically denoted by letters or subscripts of letters. But let me just take, for instance, we have, in this case, four points. I don't have a nice writing tool here. Oh, there's better. That's what I'm looking for. All right. So... Take some uh, four points and or four vertices, and we usually denote them. Maybe we'll call this vertex one, vertex two, vertex three, and vertex four. Okay, and then we're going to draw some connections between them. Now, technically, these are pairs. So, like v one, v two. That's that's a, a pair that's, in this case, connected. So, you know, the way it shows up is it shows up as, as a pair A comma B, or in this case, V1 comma V2, all right? V1, V4, that's an edge. Well, we'll put an edge there. And let's do a couple more edges. Let's do that, all right? So, for instance... V2, V4, that's an edge. However, V2, V3, since they don't, they're not connected, that's not an edge. Okay? So graph theory is the study of these, these objects. Again, we have vertices and edges. And there's, you can see now that there's a lot of ways we can, we can draw a, a graph. Okay? Because, well, there's a, a, a lot of similar ways we could draw a graph. Let me just state this. You should easily see, hopefully easily, that while V1, V2, V4, and V3 um, I could have drawn them look like that. If I would have switched the role, sort of flipped V1 and V2, notice that they all, we still have the same connections here. Okay? Like V1 is still connected to V2 and V4. V2 is still connected to V1 and V4. V4 is connected to V1, V2, and V3. And V3 is only connected to V4. So all the same connections um, are there. Even though this graph is drawn slightly differently, this is an equivalent graph. Okay? Um, and so you'll see this a lot of it in graph theory that we have equivalent graphs. There's a lot of different ways you could draw graphs. All right. So again, we the graph itself is a set of vertices and a set of edges. But it's easier to think about graphs a lot of times when we draw them. And there's a lot of different types of graphs. And I'm just going with simple graphs which have connected, excuse me, which have uh, vertices and edges. You know, maybe you have a graph that looks like this. Maybe you have a graph that looks like this. 
There's a lot of different ways graphs can look. Now, we're going to focus right now on the neighborhood and the degree of a vertex. Now, the neighborhood is basically the set of all vertices which are connected by an edge to, to the vertex in question. So if I say the neighborhood of vertex 1, that's all of the vertices which are connected by an edge with vertex 1. If I say the neighborhood of vertex so neighborhood of vertex 3, that's the set of all vertices which share an edge um, with vertex 3. Okay. Now, once we've figured out what the neighborhood is, the degree of the vertex is just the size of the neighborhood. Okay. So if there's four vertices which are connected to V1, we say V1 has um, degree of 4. Okay. Just the cardinality of the neighborhood. So let's take a, a typical, or excuse me, maybe non-typical, let's take a, an example here. Two, three, four, five vertices. We'll label these as V1, V2, V3, we'll go around the clock, V4, and V5, and we're going to make some connections. And we'll do that. Okay. All right, so let's take a couple of vertices here. I'm not going to do all of them because it's, it's um, fairly straightforward. But um, if I take, for instance, the neighborhood, the neighborhood of V4, um, sometimes this is denoted as slightly different. Um, than what I'm doing here, but uh, neighborhood of V4, sometimes N-B-E-R-H-O-D-D. -D. Some people write out the neighborhood, but I'm just writing around N. Anyways, neighborhood of V4. Well, notice V4 is connected to V3 using this edge. It's connected to V2 using that edge, and it's connected to V1 using that edge. So the neighborhood is you have V1 in it, you have V2, and you have V3. So the neighborhood of V4 is the set V1, V2, V3. Now, the degree of V4 is 3. All right? Because there's obviously three uh, vertices in the neighborhood. Okay. Now, if you take a look at, uh, let's just say, V2, so the neighborhood of V2 is, well, it's connected to V3 and V4, and the degree of V2 is 2. All right. Now, you can uh, push pause on the video and look at every single vertex in this graph and decide on sort of what's the neighborhood and degree of, of each vertex. And this would be a fair thing to ask on a quiz or a test or something like that, to find the neighborhood and degree of every vertex or a certain number of vertices on the graph. Okay, so push pause on the video. Um, I'm not going to go over this in, on the slides, but you can... Uh, fairly assume whether you're figure it out whether you're right or wrong on the neighborhoods of V3s and V1s and V5s. All right. Now, once we have a graph, we may have a, a path um, in that graph. Now, let me state it this way. We'll take, again, my... Uh, I don't think I had that last time. That's fine. Let's draw a new one. Alright. So let's label these V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, 
and V6. Okay? So a path is a sequence of vertices with connected edges. All right? So in this case, there are paths from V1 to, for instance, V3. Okay? So let me... The reason I, I, I'm choosing this example is that there's actually multiple paths from V1 to V3. If you look at it, V1, V2, and V3 would be sort of the most obvious choice. So path from V1 to V3. All right? So if I took V1, V2, V3, that's a path from V1 to V3. But also notice that you could have taken V1, V2, V6, V5, and then V3. And that would have also been a path from uh, V1 to V3. Now you go across more vertices, but sometimes you want to go across more vertices. Okay. And by the way, in terms of paths, it's fine to repeat. So if you wanted to go from, oh, I don't know, V1 to V2 to V6 to V5, back to V6, and then to V3, all right, that would have also been a path. Now, I couldn't write that in one nice line, but that's still, still a path, all right? So anytime you have a sequence of vertices and each of them are connected by edges, then you have a path, okay? And my point of doing this example is that oftentimes there's a great number uh, of great number of different paths from one vertex to another. All right. So <clears throat> I want you, uh, let me put it this way. Let's take um, a graph. and come up with a couple of different paths from one vertex to the next. All right, so take a path. Right, this is what we want to label. So let's take V1, V2, V3, So I want you to come up with a couple of different paths from V1 to, let's say, V3. We did that last time, V1 to V3. Um, so let's do it again, V3. Come up with at least two different paths from V1 to V3. Push pause on the video and then uh, come back. Now, I hope that we're seeing that when you do paths, there's sort of a, you know, a number of different ways you can do it. Uh, let me do it in the least number of jumps first. If you wanted to go from the least, you could have gone V1 to V2 to V5 to V3. I think that's the smallest um, way you can do it. V1, V2, V5, V3. All right, that's the smallest, shortest way you could do it. If you wanted to do a path which, with hits, which hits all of the vertices, you could have done that too. All right, if you'd have taken V1, V2, V6, V5, V4, and V3, notice that that path, V1, V2, V6, V5, V4, V3 actually 
hits all of the vertices, and it hits all of the vertices once, and you end up at from V1 to V3, okay? And by the way, these are some, some of the problems. I, I emphasize those two different paths. There's a lot of in-between where you hit some and you miss some, but I emphasize those two because oftentimes the problems with graph theory uh, have to do with optimization. Things like, you know, what's the shortest route? Or um, how do you get to every single vertex? Things, things of that nature. Now, so far I've been drawing what are called connected graphs. That's where if I take any two points, there's always a path from, or me, any two vertices, there's always a path from one vertex to the other that connect them. Okay. A disconnected graph would mean that there are two vertices, at least two, which aren't connected by a path. Okay. Now, basically what this comes down to is that connected can be drawn, um, well, how I say it, with, sort of without raising the pencil. You can backtrack, but without raising the pencil. Disconnected, you have to raise the pencil to draw. All right. So, for instance, um, oops, a little wider here. Um, you can draw lots of different uh, connected graphs. I'll just give you an example of one of these connected graphs. The one I'm drawing is actually a called a tree. All right. So here we have, well, let me think, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 vertices, okay? But notice that no matter which ver two vertices I pick, let's say I pick that one, and that one, I can always sort of go travel along the road and, you know, find my way to and from each vertex. Okay, so that graph is connected. All right. An example of a disconnected graph would be something like this. Right. So if I take these six vertices, I can label them, I guess, but it's not a big deal if I don't label them. If I take these six vertices, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, notice that there's no way I can go from V1 to V4 without having to lift my pencil. The same thing, any, any time, um, well, I should say this way, um, trying to go from V6 to V3, you, you can't, uh, you have to travel somewhere off an edge, all right? So here's a disconnected graph, and by the way, these two things, these two pieces are often called the connected components. So disconnected graph has connected components, right? There's, you know, this is a connected, the, uh, this thing is a connected piece, this thing is a connected piece. Um, but together as a graph, they're not connected. Okay, so this is a disconnected graph that has two connected components. All, right? All connected graphs have one connected component, obviously.